Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamonds for Saturday, September 14th. I am Drew Martin breaking down the college football slate. We got a big one going on Saturday. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. Your college football MLB picks for today, NFL for tomorrow. All is welcome here, guys. It helps out the algorithm. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we're breaking down five college football games on the slate, starting off in the Rose Bowl, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific for the Big Ten Conference matchup. Indiana Hoosiers in the UCLA Bruins, 46 being the total. The Hoosiers minus three point road favorites. We get Indiana coming in with their quarterback, Curtis Rourke, of course, uh, In the MAC conference, he really tore it up. We'll see if he can do it here. In the Big Ten, it starts off against UCLA. He led the offense last week to over 700 yards versus an FCS opponent. But still, getting that offense going after the lackluster performance week one against FIU, which, uh, by the way, that Panthers-FIU team does look improved. They really smashed Central Michigan. So not not. Don't don't want to kind of hold it against the Hoosiers too much. Uh, they did get it going a little bit in the second half, but I think they're going to have some success here. And they're up against the UCLA team that actually I'm looking to fade really coming into this season. But even after they, they've only played one game, it was week one against uh, Hawaii and the offense only scored 16 points. And sure enough, their offensive coordinator new scheme this year under Eric Benemy. He's a longtime NFL assistant, most recently with the Washington Commanders. And there's quotes out there. I was talking to Robbie Vino about this, a more complex offense. And I really think, you know, some of these college kids having a tough time kind of grasping the offense. And in when you're playing football, thinking like that, hey, I don't think it's a good thing for really offensive production here. Now, granted, they are off of a bye week, so we could see improvement, but I don't think just one week off is going to improve everything they need to. Their quarterback, Ethan Garber, is just a 50% completion percentage that first time out with two interceptions against Hawaii. Now he's taking a step up in class here in the uh, Big Ten Conference up against Indiana. Hey, I think the Hoosiers take this. The line was two and a hook. Now it's minus three pretty much across the board, so... uh, Hey, the market pushing it up. I agree with it, guys. Let's lay the three with the Hoosiers. First game up on Saturday, we're breaking down. Next one we're talking, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific kick. Earlier earlier slate on Saturday, it's Coastal Carolina and Temple. 53 and a half being the total, minus 18 and a hook. That's the shunt declares over the Owls. These are two teams right off the bat. I love looking at kind of seconds per snap and when you compare both of these offenses to last year both of them are running slower offenses this year meaning they're they're having nearly 30 seconds in between their snaps that's about a four seconds slower per snap average than last season I know four seconds doesn't sound a lot but each play when that's going on that's a lot of clock that's a lot of clock running so you get less plays that's what first pinned me on to this. But also, you, you know, Temple factoring that in was trailing in both of their first two games. So they, they would really have no reason to just let the clock run. Now, granted, one of them was against Oklahoma. So maybe they just figured, you know, that it was a blowout anyway. But also against Navy, they they weren't able to move the football very, very much and uh, running that slower offense. I don't think Temple's going to score very much at all. In Coastal Carolina, they played an FCS team, and then they also played Jacksonville State. Now, granted, both of them were higher scoring, higher scoring than this total, but Jacksonville State runs ultra high tempo, like one of the highest tempo teams in college football. So now they're going up against Temple here. I don't think we get to 53 and a half, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if actually Temple doesn't put up many points at all. I mean, they're averaging just seven points a game through their first two. So are they going to really be able to put up a bunch of offensive production? I don't think so. I think this one finishes, you know, something like 31, 31, 10, let's call it 31, seven, something like that. I think Coastal Carolina likes it. If you need a side, I'd go with the Sean Declares, but even more so guys for the video, let's go Coastal Carolina, Temple, under 53 and a half next game up we're going to talk 6 p.m eastern three o'clock pacific 
Virginia Tech and Old Dominion in-state rivalry here in Norfolk, Virginia. We are seeing the Hokies minus 15, as high as minus 15 and a half road favorites, 48 being the total. Virginia Tech comes in one and one on the season. ODU 0 and 2 on the season. But talking about Virginia Tech first year, week one, they lost outright to Vanderbilt as nearly two touchdown favorites. They were three touchdown favorites against Marshall. This is a thundering herd team that looks to be pretty down this year, and they did not cover as the three touchdown favorite. And to, to tell you the truth, it was a three point game heading uh, late in the third quarter. So that was a pretty competitive one, something that the final score might not show. And they're up against uh, Old Dominion here, the Monarchs. Yes, 0 and 2 on the season, but both of their losses, one score losses to South Carolina in. East Carolina, um, two teams that are 2-0 and themselves. We just saw South Carolina beat Kentucky last week, and ODU kind of gave them all they could handle. I think this Monarchs team is a little bit underrated. It's a sellout in Norfolk. They're not playing in Lane Stadium there in Blacksburg. Actually, Old Dominion is the home team. And Virginia Tech has struggled when playing in Norfolk against Old Dominion. They're actually 0-2 both times playing there. Um, in 2018 and 2022, all of this kind of leading up, guys, I don't think they should be more than two touchdown favorites. I, I think o o ODU, you know, it's a sellout, great atmosphere projected here. Uh, I think it plays tight. So let's put the 15 and a half. If you line shop uh, using the Wager Talk Live odd screen, 15 and a half is available in the global markets. That's what we're going to bet. Monarchs over the, over the Hokies. If you want to sprinkle a little bit on the money line, that's one way to play it, but uh, I'll go with the underdog here and put the 15 and a hook in our pocket. Got two games left. A reminder, if you could comment below, this is uh, the Saturday special college football edition. Usually do some MLB, but guys, actually, I'm in uh, Cabo San Lucas here in, in Mexico. and We got a uh, tropical storm and a lot of the locals here saying, uh, you know, the power could go out up to uh, 48 hours. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but wanted to get the video out anyway. So I'm talking uh, really late on Thursday night on the Pacific Coast with the college football lines out. So let me know in the comments below. A reminder there, it does help out the algorithm. Your college football picks, any questions, fire away. We do have premium picks available, wagertalk.com, experts page, Drew Martin, Saturday, college football slate up, some MLB picks as well. NFL for Sunday will be posted shortly. All right, next one up, we're talking Boston College and Missouri. This is uh, 9.45 a.m. Pacific time with 54 being the total, minus 16 and a hook. That's the Missouri Tigers as the home favorite. Boston College is a team I'm looking to bet on, guys. I mean, first off, this is a top 25 matchup on Saturday. Both teams 2-0 and against the spread, 2-0 and out the gate. Boston College, they're an offensive line with three projected NFL draftees. They get good push up front. We saw them play great against uh, Florida State going into Tallahassee, coming out outright winners as big dogs. Well, they're catching nearly the same number here against Missouri. They're going to have to go on the road to Columbia, Missouri. Not an easy place to play by any means, but head coach Bill O'Brien First, the first road game went into Tallahassee and won outright. I think he could do it again here. Um, they're also number 130 in college football in terms of tempo, and they keep the ball on the ground. They got a running quarterback as well in Castellanos. I think this is going to be a short, short game. I think the clock's going to be running. I think it's limited possessions. That's another thing that points, points me towards the underdog, just kind of overall blimps view. But uh, throw on top of that, you know, Boston College, I think, will be able to grind out some first downs. And they're up against Missouri here. A lot of people will point to, you know, Missouri looking strong out the gate, you know. But the, the fact is their strength of schedule, they played against Buffalo and they played against Murray State, an FCS team. So even though they haven't let up uh, any points this season, I think that's going to change on Saturday. Their head coach, Drinkowitz, he's not a guy – I don't know. I guess, you know, he's, he's kind of got the program heading in the right direction, but I don't know if it's a little bit misleading. He's just six and 10 at home as a home favorite against the spread. So, hey, I think Boston College kind of shortens this one, guys. Putting the 16 in a hook, a big number here. That's on the BC Eagles to go three and oh, 
move up in the rankings, at least 3-0 and against the spread. We'll put the points in our pocket, sprinkle a little bit there on the money line. Got one game left here talking in the SEC, Texas A&M and Florida. A&M was four and a half point road favorites. Now it's three and a half. This line has moved a full point here around some key numbers. 46 and a half being, a, being the total. I did a, uh, a solo video on the Wager Talk YouTube channel earlier this week. So I'll just be quick with this, guys, if you want to uh, check that one out. But both teams kind of have similar profiles here. One and one on the season. Disappointing week one marquee matchups going down as uh, Texas A&M lost to Notre Dame. Florida lost to Miami, and then they come back the next week and smash FCS opponents. I actually think this Florida defense is a little bit underrated by the masses because they went up against Cam Ward. You know, he's doing his best uh, Heisman campaign right now in the early season, and he looked very, very good. But the thing is, the Florida defense did give up some big plays. They were just all through the air. They actually played very good rush defense, only letting up one big play. And they're up against Texas A&M here, matchup-wise. Their quarterback, Connor Wegman, you know, he's in his third year in college football, and he only has one pass completion over 40 yards uh, with multiple offensive coordinators. You can't really blame it on the offensive system. So I think they're going to have a tough time moving the ball through the air. And just talked about the Florida defense uh, being good against the rushing attack. Uh, if this Texas A&M offense is struggling, which I think they will be, you know, keep in mind, it's in the swamp, prime time, 3.30 here in the SEC. This is going to be a tough atmosphere for them, SEC conference game. I think that the Florida Gators, you know, it, it, Texas A&M laying points on the road. I, I don't know. I mean, they lost to Notre Dame. Notre Dame lost to Northern Illinois. So how good is Notre Dame? I don't know. You know, and nobody really knows. And Texas A&M lost to them. So uh, I think the Florida Gators catching points at home. The home dog is barking. Let's go with the Gators plus three and a half. Guys, that's five games for you. Gators plus three and a half. The number has moved off the four and a half. Don't want to give a dead number, but usually that's a good tell. Boston College, big dogs, plus 16 and a half. We got Old Dominion as well, a big dog, plus 15 and a half against Virginia Tech. We're on the under, Coastal Carolina and Temple, 53 and a hook is available. In the first game we talked, Indiana Hoosiers, minus three against the UCLA Bruins. Guys, that's going to do it for the Saturday show. Let me know if you like this, you know, five games, college football for Saturday. Or if you want me to go back to doing some more Major League Baseball on Saturday, either way, in the comments below, smash that like button. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets. Enjoy your Saturday.